Good morning, good morning, good morning. How blessed we are to praise and lift our Lord and our Savior, our Christ, who is worthy of our praise. Thank you so much for tuning in on this morning, and now we are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. Quentin is going to give us a scripture. He's going to give us a prayer, and then we're going to worship God. Then we'll come back with a word from God. Let's, let's worship his name. Let's praise him forevermore. Today I will be reading Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. As thou not know, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases his strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Please bow your head for a word of prayer. Dear Father God, we thank you for bringing us all here together today, Lord. Please bless us as we travel through our days and keep our head on straight, Lord. Please bless those families that are in need, and please help us not. Uh, please keep us level-headed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Eternal God, our Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We come thanking you, Lord, for grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient. We ask now, Lord, that you will please speak to our hearts, our minds, and our souls, that we might see you in all that we do. God, please forgive me of my sins, for I have sinned and come short of your glory. But now, Lord, I need preaching power. I need your hands to sustain me. I need you to touch, even now, Lord, that your word might go forth, that your people might be blessed. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his grace. And thank God for his holy word. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning as we worship our Lord, our Christ, our Savior in all that we do. If you will, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 17, starting at verse number 7. 1 Kings chapter 17, starting at verse number 7. The Bible reads, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, and that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For, thou, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain, upon the earth and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and her and her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. And I want to talk to us about the sustaining hands of God, the sustaining hands of God. We need the hands of God in our lives and in all that we do to sustain us in all that we face. How many of you recognize the hands of God within your life? God is moving in your life according to his holy will. His hands are maneuvering our lives around. We are living testimonies that God has his hands on us, the sustaining hands of God. There's a story told about an auctioneer who was taking bids on an old violin. It was not much to look at and no sound actually came from it. It was seemingly a worthless instrument. The auctioneer started to bid, who will give me one dollar, five dollars, even ten dollars 
No hands went up. There was an elderly gentleman in the back of the room who came forward and replaced the strings in that old violin. He old he oiled the keys and tightened the strings. Then he began to play that old violin. Oh, the sweetest sound, the sweetest sound of music you've ever heard came from that old violin. The people cheered and the master musician played that old violin. The auctioneer raised the price and he got $20,000 from that old violin. Ah, that's the way it is with our lives. We're worthless until we get in the hands of the master. Until we are in God's hands, we're worthless. But when we find ourselves in the hands of God, uh, we have a valuable, uh, we are valuable and we have a price that cannot be paid. When we're in God's hand, and I, I want to ask you, are you in God's hand? Is your life in God's hands? Are you walking and talking and living according to God until we have been touched by the master's hands. It is his hands that make the difference in our lives. How many, how many of you recognize the hands of God in your lives? It is God and God alone that's sustaining us. God has his hands on us. God has God's hands is leading and directing our lives. That's exactly what we witness here in 1 Kings 17. This chapter shows the hands of God working through the prophet called Elijah. God has caused a drought in the land. The Bible says the brook has dried up and there was no dew or rain. Baal worshipers were depending on their little g-gods to ensure good crops. But when the brook dried up, Baal could not make provision. You, you know God has to send us to dry brook situations so we will trust our source and not our resource. Uh, Jesus is our source who's making it happen, providing in our lives. Jesus is our source who's making ways out of no way. Jesus is our source who's working everything out for his good. And someone just needs to know in your life that God, when you're in his hand, he's your source. Sometimes God has to send us to dry brook situations uh, so we can recognize who it is that's really been taken care of. You, you know it's God that been taking care of your life. Trust your source and not your resource. Re recognize the hands of God in your life. Recognize the food you eat. God provided the, the clothes you wear. God provided the house you live in, the health and strength you have. It is the hands of God sustaining us in all of our lives. Everything we have, God and God alone has been providing for us. And sometimes we have a hard time recognizing it until the brook dries up. Has your brook ever dried up? I, I want you to think about that. Has your brook ever dried up in your life? In the text, the brook has dried up, but God was providing for Elisha. God allowed a raven to drop off meat and bread and for Elijah twice a day. And Elijah was able to drink and eat from the brook. That, this lets us know that while we're walking it out, 
God is working it out. So now the Lord tells Elijah to go to Zarephath. And he says, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain you. Now, if you're not walking by faith, this part of the text might discourage you. God, God tells Elijah to go to Zarephath and the widow woman will sustain you. But Elijah will, will soon discover she cannot take care of herself. She, she's down to her last. But when we're down to nothing, God is up to something. The text, when Elijah came to the gate of the city, behold, there was a widow woman. Oh, she was gathering her sticks. And he called her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have no cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. The widow woman, she finds herself in a hopeless situation. Her place in life, she's a widow. She was in a difficult place. She was, she was by herself trying to provide for her son. She's in a, a hopeless place and she, her, that's her place she's in. But the problem, Elijah, that she's in, uh, Elijah asked for a morsel of bread. He, he's, he isn't asking for a whole loaf. He, he isn't asking for a little sandwich. He's asking for just a small piece of bread. And, and the riddle replies that all she has is just a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in her crew. She's down to her very last. She's She's outside gathering some sticks, and she's intended to take those sticks and use them to cook her last meal for her and her son. She is looking to cook her final meal, and she is in a hopeless, in a desperate situation in, in her mind. There is no way out of this hopeless and helpful situation and that's the place that's the problem and then look at her plan her plan is simple she's going to take these two sticks and 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 the last of her food and she's going to go and cook it and for her and her son and she's going to die she's in a bad predicament. Uh, they, they had reached the end of the line. Death is the only ending she can see in mind. Uh, this is a woman without hope. This is a woman who sees no way out of her situation. She's ready to embrace death for herself and her son because there is no other alternative. This is, uh, this is about as hopeless as it gets. And right in the midst of her despair, God sends Elijah. He sends Elijah her way and she makes him a little cake. I, I, I need God to send somebody my way when life gets in despair. When you are down to nothing, God is up to something. And that's why, my friends, uh, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. We have to walk by faith, and faith is taking risks. And we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, if you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. Lord, whatever you say, that's what I'm going to do. We have to walk by faith and not by sight, when she was down to her last, she still baked a cake for Elijah. She took a risk. She, she took a risk, and she was able to find herself doing what God said. When she was giving her last, God was filling up her barrel. The more she gave away, the more she received back. Her hopeless situation 
became a happy situation because she put her trust in the Lord. By, by faith, the widow of Zarephath baked the cake for Elijah. And the Bible says they ate for many days. In other words, the widow of Zarephath put her two sticks in and little oil and put her little meal in the sustaining hands of God and God made a way out of no way. Someone listening to me today, your faith will be strengthened when you put your faith in the sustaining hands of God. I know the situation don't look good. I, I know you can't understand it. I, I know your eyes cannot see it, but when you put your your faith in God and the sustaining hands of God. God will lead you where he wants you to go. Look at her. She has only just a little bit in her barrel, but somehow, instead of her dying, she is thriving because she put her faith in God. I tell you what, my young brother, my young sister, you need faith in God. You, you need to put your whole heart in the hands of God. You need to put your life in the sustaining hands of God, and God will direct, lead, and guide. Look, God provided. God provided. God made a way out of no way in her life. God provided, and God made it happen. When your life is in the sustaining hands of God. No matter what the situation looks like, God can make a way out of no way. Somebody today, you're looking at this story. As we broke it down, you're looking at this story. You're seeing this woman. She was down to nothing. But when she put it in the hands of God, God sustained her. And I tell you, your life might be down to nothing, but when you put your life in the hands of God, God can take your life and make what he wants you to be. Put your life in the God's hand. You'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. God was raised from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Put your life in the hands of God. Put your life in the hands of God. He's a sustainer. He's a keeper. He's a way maker. He'll make ways out of no way. Put your life in the hands of God. As Brother Pippin sings, there might be one, oh, there might be one who will say, I need my life in the sustaining hands of God. I need my life in his hands. Every time oh, I yes, think oh, yes. about you. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Every time I read about you. Every time I yes, Lord. hear your name, I start to smile. Put your life in the sustaining hands of God. Every time yes, the Lord. sun starts shining. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every time the wind starts blowing. Somebody blow needs a yes, Lord, in your spirit. Every time I hear your anointing, I start to Put your to faith smile. in God. Obey the voice of God. Put your faith in God. Let me take. I love, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. And let yes, me Lord. take the time to say that I care. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Because I love you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody ought to fall in love with I Jesus. I love you, Lord. Give your life to the Lord and fall in love with I Jesus. I love you, Lord. Obey his voice. Come. I love that are weary, come. I love you that are broken, come. You that are downtrodden, come. You, 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 you who cannot see your way, come.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And he's in love with me Oh, now. say yes. Say yes. Say yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a mighty good God. Because I'm in love with Jesus. He's a mighty good Savior. And he's in love with me You ought to say yes. Yes, say yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes to the King. Yes. Yes to your will. Oh, yes to your ways, Lord. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Say yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. He's in love with me. Oh, Lord. I'm in love with Jesus. Oh, yes. Somebody needs to say yes. Oh, yes. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, God. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Move, oh, Lord, into somebody's heart. Somebody might say yes to you. Somebody, Lord, listening right now who does not know you're in the pardon of their sins. Move, O oh God, in their hearts and minds the souls that might get it right with you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for your goodness. Thank you for your sustaining hands. Thank you that you have your hands on us. And thank you, Lord, that when you tell us to obey, we will trust you. We'll have our faith. We'll put our trust in you. Help, Lord. Somebody listening today, they... Somebody needs faith in God. Somebody needs to take the risk in God. Whatever God says, that's what I'm going to do. Minister to the hearts and the minds. Somebody's mirror barrel is low and they just need an uplifting God. Lift somebody. Lift somebody today, Lord. Only, only you can. Only you can, Lord. Lift. Lift a bow down head. Lift a broken heart. Lift somebody today they might see that it's the sustaining hands of God making ways out of no way. Do it for us, Lord. Oh, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it for us. Do it for us, Lord. We'll forever praise you, glorify you. We'll thank you for all of the goodness and all of the grace that you have given us. We love you. We thank you. Now as we share in giving somebody, Lord, need, bless us to be a cheerful giver. Bless us to give from our hearts for your glory. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. How blessed we are. How blessed we are to hear the word of God, to worship God. And now you see on the screen ways to give. So let us give from our hearts that God be praised. God be glorified, magnified in all that we do. We love the Lord. and We thank God for his love towards us. Now let's have our benediction. God be with you. May the good Lord be with you. God be with you. In your coming and in your going. God be with you. Until, until we meet again. Again. May the good Lord be with you. Be with you. Whatsoever you do, be with you. may the good Lord be with you. Be with until you. until we meet, we meet again. again. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your people, Lord. Minister to hearts, minds, and souls that somebody will see you and know you for their personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Sustain somebody, Lord, 
Somebody needs to hear from you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, to dominion, both power now and forevermore. And all God's children sung together. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. Go in the Lord's peace. God bless you indeed.